This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbilmec, a bit of planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now home in the studio, yeah, in the living room. Unfortunately, I'm not able to go outside. It's Sunday now, so it's family time, but I feel like I need to get this done. So sorry for all the mess in the background here, there's some toys and stuff. But today I want to talk about the charging of the Volkswagen ID7 GTX Tourer. It has the 91 kilowatt hour battery, it's supposed to charge a 200 kilowatt. So I actually did three different charging tests. In the first charging test, I preheated the car via the manual preheating, you know, after some range test, and then I plug in and charge. And it's, uh, yeah, during that uh, t session, uh, the, the, I made a mistake by exiting the car and coming back in again, and suddenly I noticed that um, uh, the AC, uh, well, the AC or cooling, I'm not sure if it was heating or cooling, was running. So I thought that might have messed up the charging session because there was some significant throttling. So then I tried again, another charging session, and the next day when I did the um, trailer test, after trailer test, went a bit deep, and then I started charging, and then I went from 5%, to I don't remember, and then by the time I had 10%, I restarted the charging session, but then the battery heated up slightly more. And then, yeah, I was still not happy with that result because it seems like the battery overheated. So I did one more try. I parked the car actually outside in the afternoon until evening, and then I went for it. And there were, this time I purposely did not preheat until it stopped. I pur on purpose cold let it cold get slightly, but I did did still receive quite fast speed. So now you guys can see the results. So, um, yeah, the 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 cold session uh, starts kind of slow and it actually heats up the battery, the aux HB auxiliary consumer, that is PTC heater, because AC compressor speed is zero, so it's not producing the AC, but you see that it hits 200 kilowatt eventually, but it sucked a little bit in the beginning to uh, heat up the battery, whereas the other cases, they were already warm enough, and then eventually they will start cooling the battery. But also during 1000 kilometer challenge, I noticed that sometimes when it should cool the battery, it doesn't cool the battery, and then it over overheats and the first overheating step might be at 45 degrees celsius and then the second might be at uh, 49 degrees celsius sorry for the noise in the background but that's just, just how it is here uh, but you can see that the two left and the middle and the left they start uh, throttling quite uh, quite sudden now and quite a lot whereas the cold session to the right is able to maintain a, a flatter curve and that is simply because the battery is not that hot so yeah like i mentioned it seems like the first uh, throttle point is at 45 degrees uh, the warm session in the middle might even hit 49 degrees. I don't remember how it was. But the cold session is actually leading. Also, if you look at percent here versus the, the two other sessions. So, um, yeah, I, uh, on purpose, I did not preheat until it stopped. I preheated uh, pre earlier. So th this video is maybe to show Volkswagen how they can try to tune the software differently so you get a flat curve. I'm going to show you guys a charting curve afterwards. But um, yeah, eventually the cold session goes slower, but it has a, a way nice and flat the curve. Right now it could appear like the cold session is charging slower, but remember that the cold session is at the higher state of charge than the other sessions. But yeah, yeah, the warm session in the middle, see now we hit 49 degrees Celsius. So even at 3.9 kilowatt something, um, the auxiliary consumer, the, the, the cooling is running yeah, in, the mid, in the middle screen there to cool down the battery. You can see the battery inlet is 13.5 degrees Celsius, but uh, I'm not sure, um, it, is the cooling not strong enough to cool down the battery? I have another theory because um, the smaller 82 kilowatt hour battery was wonderful. Even when uh, last year when I had a kaput press car and the AC unit was uh, broken, uh, I could still do 1000 kilometer challenge and the car wants to pre uh, kind of heat up the battery anyway to around 50% until it starts replicating. Uh, but okay, my point is that um, the, the smaller battery might not be that densely packed so it can cool it down better but the bigger battery here maybe they packed it more and then it just it does it cannot control the heat as much as the smaller battery plus that we are charging at 200 kilowatt versus 185 kilowatt here you know so yeah maybe that's the case but um as you guys see in this charging session uh it 
like on the on the left on, on a preheat and in the warm session they they don't cool down yet they cool down a bit later but uh, the cold session to the right shows you that you can you can perfectly start cooling it earlier kind of pre-cool it to prevent it from overheating and therefore get a flatter curve sorry i'm a bit uh, i have the man flu also everything is wrong with this video except for the data and the presentation but um you see that the cold session hit 90% first and it will, uh, well, I don't remember, will it hit 100% first? We're gonna see, but just showing you what is possible, but uh, eventually, yeah, the, the three sessions, they kind of hit roughly the same, um, the same temperatures, right? Battery temperature, but also keep in mind that, uh, well, the outside temperature is a bit messy, uh, it's not the correct one. And this usually happens with many cars. It has something to do with that the heat that is dumped out of the car passes we passes through the uh, that the outside temp sensor that's why it looks like it's 24 or 20, yeah, 24 degrees but it's not it, it was roughly 15 10 15 degrees celsius on the preheated and warm session but the cold session was in fact three degrees celsius outside or roughly there but uh, there wasn't that much cooling going on yeah there, there you see so the cold session actually was the fastest and here you see the two first sessions, the warm and the what they were, you know, preheated sessions, normal preheating, they both dip almost at the same time. Slight difference there, uh, because maybe because the warm warm session was a bit warm and it started a bit deeper when you charge. But you see, it follows the same dip curve. But then the cold session, which purposely I purposely did not preheat that much, it managed to do this. So. You know, is this something that the Volkswagen engineers can fix? So start, uh, okay, let me show you again. Uh, roughly here, maybe, I don't remember, you guys can go back and look at the data. Maybe roughly here-ish is where it starts cooling, but maybe it should start cooling already down here. Starts pre-cooling, try, try to catch the heat. Maybe the, the, the um, cooling algorithm for this battery pack has not been optimized for the more energy dense battery pack, right? Maybe they just reuse the same software from the 82 kilowatt hour. I'm not sure, I'm just tossing out some ideas here and also trying to help out Volkswagen and also owners who use this because remember that it was only 10, 15 degrees Celsius outside or two, two three degrees Celsius. You could, can you imagine if it's 25 or 30 degrees outside, how is gonna rapid get done, right? And now I'm gonna compare how this uh, ID7 does it compared to some other cars, but um, uh, yeah, the Explorer, why Explorer? Well, because that's the, the best recording I have, but they use the same battery as the ID7 or the rear wheel drive. And then I also include the Q6, the more expensive Q6, or it could be an A6 or, or S6. And you see that the S6 or Q6 charges way faster because it's the 800 volt architecture. But the ID7 can still maintain okay speed. And right now, let me see, yeah, the Q6 has a big lead, but um, Explorer or the smaller battery uh, seems to be right on par with the bigger batteries. So it's like, okay, you have a bigger battery, you have higher voltage also. Yeah, that's another thing. You see that the, the voltage on the ID7 is higher than the, the Explorer. So over there, you get a slight gain in lower current, right? And slightly better efficiency or losses there versus 800 volt system which is actually 700, yeah. Um, so, all right, but uh, eventually also the Q6 will start throttling, but the uh, ID7 can still maintain good speed as long as we have this Colgate session that I managed to uh, uh, fabricate, right? <laughs> uh, but anyway, but the, the Explorer, I should also mention that the Explorer or the 82 kilowatt hour session or that battery, in the beginning, when I tested it last year or something, it did also have a quite uh, strong, like, strong dip that indicated that there was some thermal problem or overheating. But then in the newer session here, uh, it doesn't do that anymore. It has an, a more even curve. So maybe that's also the case for the ID7 that eventually they're gonna fix this. So um, yeah, but all right, uh, which car is leading now? Okay, the Q6 is still ahead. It is already at 70% after 17 minutes. That is amazing. But the two other cars, they can still maintain okay speed, yeah. But uh, you will see something interesting happening now, which is that uh, the Q6 seems to have been tuned for uh, going as fast as possible to 80%, because that's how many car manufacturers measure the battery, I mean, the charging time, right? Okay, let's see now. So at 80%, it, it does it in around 22 minutes, right? There, okay, awesome. And then 
the speed kind of plummets. Uh, well, actually, not yet. Hmm, okay. Okay, there maybe at 81%, it starts throttling and throttling. Okay. But uh, the other cars, they, they still maintain a quite flat curve. Yeah. What else can I tell you? Um, well, the battery energy content, yeah. And also, why did I not uh, use cars kind of Q6? Um, I think I didn't have any good data there yet. But look what's happening now. Suddenly, the Q6 speed just plummets to the ground. It becomes so slow. Yeah, roughly at 85%. I don't even pay attention. Now, suddenly, the two other cars, they are gaining big time on the Q6. Uh, the Q6 seems like it was going to hit 90% first, but... The other two cars are gaining so fast. They're charging, uh, well, in, in C-rate, roughly twice, you know, uh, like twice as much in C-rate. So what will actually happen is that the ID7 and the Explorer will hit 90% before the Q6. Wow. And not only that, but uh, if you go past 90%, which some people might do, uh, the ID7 and Explorer, they have uh, like a classic fat e-tron like uh, charging curve, so they can still maintain okay speed even past 90%. You see, it's marvelous. You can charge to 100% or at least 97% or whatever, if you like, utilize all the battery. Whereas the Q6, it goes so slow now, past 90% that uh, maybe you want to unplug and go, right? So I don't remember how it was now. So now the noise might increase from the children because they are suddenly downstairs. They were upstairs earlier. But um, we'll see that I think ID7 will go to 100% first. Yeah, despite that, you know, why do I compare different battery sizes? Well, because we are looking at charging time here. You can say, well, but you should look at efficiency and so on. Well, yeah, but as, as long as we are compare percent. Yeah, there you go. ID7, one, and then explore it slightly behind it. And then the Q6. Well, taking 24 kilowatt, um, it's going to take a while to hit 100%. I actually didn't bother char uh, recording that session to 100%. I stopped at 96% or something, but just to show you that it goes so slow at the very end here. And here you see the charging curve. Uh, Q6 has a quite big start there, head start. Uh, and then uh, the ID7, naturally, because it's a bigger battery, it also charges faster than the, the Explorer or the 82 kilowatt hour battery. And these two, they follow each other. You know, like I said earlier, the 82 pack would have a deep, similar, roughly similar place maybe as the ID7, the, the, the big battery had a dip, but now they don't have that dip anymore. But to my big surprise, uh, this area up here uh, seems to be greater than, uh, or I mean, it shouldn't give you a great advantage, but towards the end, to 90%. <laughs> the, the, the two other lines, they, they actually went faster to 90%. The, this, or you can say that this dip here below here made it lose the race to 90% and 100%. So, oh well, but now you guys have seen it, that the Volkswagen battery charges fast. And this is the, the like, I compare the more expensive 800 volt architecture in the Q6 or A6 or whatever, right? Similar car but it costs roughly, well, maybe up to, how, uh, up to twice as much as the ID7. Uh, but in terms of charging performance, the ID7 can kind of match the more expensive car. Yeah. And then also, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to um, uh, end now soon, but um, also I hope that Volkswagen engineers look at this and maybe try to fine tune the charging curve so that uh, we don't get this um, rapid gait. So that's gonna be for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later. <laughs>